Hey guys, Adrian here from the Digital Dojo. So today we're going to have a review of the iPhone 4S. I've had this for almost over a week now. And uh, my this is a 16 gig white model. My 32 gig black has yet to come in, but I thought I've used the device enough to have the review. Uh, or to conduct the review and of course you can always check in the video description below to see the text I'm going to you know, write out a review with some pictures uh, with some other examples and stuff like that so you can go over to digitaldojos.com for more information on the iPhone 4S uh, as well as you can check out our other videos where we showed off some of the speed tests along with the first impressions and overview of what's new in iOS 5 so with that guys don't forget to like this video and enjoy the review all right, so the first thing I want to talk about in the iPhone 4S is the design, the hardware, specifically what's actually new in the actual uh, iPhone 4S. So as you can see here, it looks just about the same in terms of design compared to the 4, and that's because really it is. There's no really new design changes except comparing it to a 4, which I have here, my old iPhone 4. You can notice the antenna placement is different. There's now dual band antennas, and the antenna placement is different so that it's a little bit more easier for no antenna, there's no antenna gate issues. So you can see here at the top, that antenna is now removed. Uh, and there's just a couple of uh, just antenna uh, placements. Uh, weight wise, size wise, it's exactly the same. Uh, really no, no change. I, I do feel like my iPhone 4S is a little bit more heftier than my iPhone 4. But uh, nonetheless, really what's all new is the hardware. It has the same design uh, internally as the iPhone 4 does. So as you can see here inside the iPhone 4, it has a basic basic same design it has about you know a little bit of longer battery life coupled with iOS 5 it has a new A5 processor which is dual core and allows for seven times better graphics performance on the iPhone 4S and this really shines in uh, games and camera apps and just overall performance on iOS 5 so that's just covering uh, the design and hardware not much different like I said the antenna the dual core A5 the improved camera with 1080p shooting uh, 1080p capability and 8 megapixel uh, quality shots we're going to show a little bit of that later on so with that let's go right into the software so uh, iPhone 4s is coupled with iOS 5 so that means you get iMessages you get newsstand you get some other new features like reminders and of course you get the all popular Siri which you can ask it uh, questions for dealing with, you know, it's a personal assistant, therefore helping you with your iPhone 4S. So it's so a little quick of example. So you can ask it some basic questions. So you can ask it like some basic questions like the ones following. Make a note to upload the video later. Noted. Check my email. Get a new email. You have 25 e Check my text messages. You have no new text messages. Make a reminder for tomorrow. Okay, just tell me what you want to be reminded about. Film iPhone 4S review. Here's your reminder for tomorrow at 9 a.m. Confirm. Okay, I'll remind you. This, along with many other stuff, is uh, a lot of, you know, just a little bit of a sample of what you can ask Siri. I mean, you can ask it to call people. You can tell it to play music. As you can see there, it plays my reminder. Um, you can also see... You can ask it in various ways. The thing about Siri, what's so great about it, is not only it's not just like a regular voice recognition. It it does interpret what you're saying, but it interprets in the meaning of what you're saying. It. So, for example, you can say, "What's the weather for today?" Or you can say it in another way, like, "Do I need an umbrella tomorrow?" I don't know where you are. You can turn. So in that terms, I would have to turn location services on and be able to tell. But, I mean, it just interprets the way you say things and, you know, in a, in a matter if you're saying it in a different way or if you're saying it, you know, uh, you're just asking it in one, you know, something that means the same thing. Like, for example, like I said, do I need an umbrella tomorrow or am I asking how the weather is? You know, stuff like that. It can interpret all of that. And it's really smart because it bases stuff off your last question. So, for example, if I said, you know, uh, what's the weather like uh, for tomorrow? And then it would tell me what my forecast is for tomorrow. And I say, do I need an umbrella? It's going to interpret, do I need an umbrella for tomorrow? Because it kind of picks off of what I last said in Siri. So it really is kind of like a smart personal assistant. Obviously, it's still in beta and has some bugs to be worked out. 
but for now, you know, it's only going to get better through updates. All right, so that's a little bit of what's new in software, obviously coupled with iOS 5. So with that, let's talk about the hardware. The new camera with the A iOS 5. All right, moving on to hardware, let's talk about the new camera coupled with the iPhone 4S, the 8 megapixel, the 1080p recording. There's a couple new things that's been integrated to make uh, photos that much better. Obviously, you still have your options for grid and HDR, HDR photos, so you can also use the plus button on your volume rocker to take pictures now. This also allows for quicker photos you can see coupled with the, I, uh, with the A5 dual core processor. So. You can just see I can take a whole multiple, you know, pictures with relatively easily taking the snapshots. No really, no real lag. Uh, focus is really great. There's also uh, built-in image stabilization now, which works really, really well. The depth of field has been improved. Overall, the 1080p recording looks really, really well. And here I'm going to actually show you guys a couple of the snapshots and uh, 1080p video test footage I've taken with the iPhone 4S. And I'm going to go ahead and show you, this is in low light, obviously. If I turn on the light, a little bit of what it looks like. A dog here. Alright, so this is a quick test. And close up here, focus. This is a test of the iPhone 4S camera. On the outside right here, uh, this is my car right here. We are looking, uh, this is outside, it's about midday, it's about like 5 o'clock nearly. Just looking around here, so you guys can see, you know. Uh, just a little bit of a test here, and we go ahead and go in the car. My car's a mess right now. But I think I've showed you guys this uh, before. All right now, let's talk about that A5 processor. How well does it really stack up other than uh, snapshots? Well, you can see here I have an iPhone fourth generation running 4.3, and you know, not nothing really night and day difference. Nothing you're gonna extremely notice. You know, in opening ordinary apps. Yes, it's obviously a little bit quicker. It can do a couple of stuff like open web pages, etc. Pretty quick. I mean, it's about the same thing on each device. I mean, you're not really going to see super, super, you know, huge difference in opening regular apps. But when it comes to like stuff like camera, taking pictures, uh, you know, getting your camera out to take a picture of, you know, an event like something's happening and you want to get your camera ready right away, yes, the A5 processor, you're definitely going to see a difference, like I said, especially in uh, opening your camera and taking snapshots. There's really no delay when using the uh, iPhone 5s or iPhone 4s, I should say, camera and switching between, you know, snapshot the video mode and automatically recording. There really isn't much of a lag there when you would see it on other devices like the iPhone 4 or the iPod Touch fourth generation. With basic software stuff, you're not going to see much of a difference in the A5 uh, compared to the A, uh, you know, the previous processor in the dual core. Though, again, we haven't yet seen developers optimize applications for it, so I'm sure we're going to see some great gaming performance. Definitely, that's where you're going to see it shine in the gaming-wise. And uh, just a little quick demo of a game that I have here actually opened up uh, just to show you some of the graphics. It can handle really well, and it's uh, coming into a nice gaming uh, device. Yeah, some so. criminals are never meant. So here we are in the actual game, and you can see here it's pretty fluid. I mean, again, not that bad, and the actual camera movements are really nice in uh, first-person shooters and stuff like that. I mean, it takes advantage of the accelerometer or some games. The A5 processor really is... Uh, you know, a uh, big improvement in terms of for gaming, etc. So you can see there, this is just one of the examples of many games available through the App Store. Another noticeable difference in hardware change is the new speaker. A lot of people didn't notice there is a new speaker coupled with the iPhone 4S. Uh, that really stands out. Now, traditionally, obviously, it's garbage in, garbage out. You're going to hear it because it's coming in through my webcam microphone and out your speakers. But just to give you an example of a song playing here with a, uh, oh, I guess it's docked in, so I need to undock this real quick. But it playing with. Again, really, really loud, you can tell there. Not only that, just when you get the phone, you can just tell from most of the system sounds. So, for example, I can just erase this here. And with the volume turned up all the way. You can just notice some noticeably different sounds comparing it to your other devices. Obviously, Siri is pretty loud on its own, so. Who are you? I am Siri. You just get much more of a clearer speaker and much more, I guess, heavier in a sense where it's uh, it's a lot more deeper. And you can you can tell from the sounds. Uh, it's much it's much more rich sound even compared to the iPhone 4. Um, okay, moving on, let's talk about the pros and cons of the product. 
Pro-wise, obviously we have the new 8 megapixel camera along with the front-facing FaceTime camera and the LED light. iOS 5 also offers some new features to be used with the camera. Like I said, there's video stabilization, etc. Siri actually proves to be a really, really great uh, use of, uh, you know, just to do daily tasks. I mean, you, you end up doing a lot of uh, things that you could normally do with Siri just by, you know, like from setting reminders to setting alarm clocks. I find myself using Siri uh, to do stuff that I would normally obviously have to manually type in. And it really just saves that much time, you know, even if it's a couple seconds or even when you're doing, you know, things that you need hands-free like driving or anything like that. You can tell it to text people, call people. It really is a great addition to the phone and really, really works well in terms of recognizing voice, what you're saying, what you're trying to interpret from the, you know, which, whatever way you say it. Um, obviously, like I said, iOS 5 is coupled with this, but that comes with other devices as well. But iOS 5 is a big upgrade with uh, some new stuff like iMessages, etc. Um, and another thing that a lot of people don't take into the fact, I really, really, I'm on SoftBank. Um, I really found the antennas to be a huge pro with the dual band antennas. Obviously, they change the placement, so you really don't get that antenna gate issue unless you really close, you know, hold hard on the actual antennas. Um, but there's no antenna gate issue like there was on the 4, which was, you know, kind of a disappointment when you, uh, if you didn't have a case for your phone, uh, for your 4, that's why they gave free cases. Uh, no issues like that. Not only that, I get much more signal increase and, you know, stuff like that in places where before with my 4, I wouldn't get, uh, you know, signal or mu as much bars. The 4S really, and I've been around a lot here in Japan, again, my provider is SoftBank, but, um, the 4S has stood up and, uh, done really, really well in terms of signal. Now, let's talk about cons. Obviously, Compared to the iPhone 4, there's really no new design. I mean, it's exactly the same. I have another iPhone 4S 32 gigabyte coming in as well. It's exactly the same as the iPhone 4. Really no distinction unless you actually look at the physical uh, location of the antennas, which you can then you'll be able to tell. You would actually uh, can tell uh, the differentiate the 4S from the 4. You know, stacked up wise, they're about the same size. There is no difference in thickness. Or, you know, if even by holding it and there's no signatures on the back that says S, like on the 3G, nothing of that sort. So, uh, and, you know, that was a pretty big disappointment for a lot of people who want to see iPhone 5, or technically this is the fifth generation. But really no new design, so that can be a con for some people. Battery, out of the box with iOS 5, battery was a big issue. Um, location services turned on along with some other stuff with Siri. Um, you know, I had decent battery life. I can go from five to six hours, you know, charging through. I watched a couple movies on here, like two-hour movies. It did decent, you know, from 100% charge. It wouldn't go that low. But by the end of the day, I find myself having 15, 10% battery. Um, and uh, it's really, you know, due to a lot of stuff, like I said, location services, having Wi-Fi on all the time, brightness. But once you adjust your settings, you get really decent battery life. As, like I said, it can last you about the whole day until you actually have to charge it. Um, and what I notice is when it actually gets into the lower parts of the charge, you know, when you get into your 1%, 2%, it doesn't really die as quickly as the 4 did. And, you know, I had my iPhone on 1% listening to music for about a good 20 minutes before it actually died. So in that respect, it does, you know, the new battery coupled with iOS 5 does uh, show some improvement over the 4. But nothing substantial, you know, in terms of you know, if you're going to be shelling out for an upgrade, you won't see super, you know, uh, increased battery performance. That's why they had to underclock the actual A5 processor. Uh, and last but not least, obviously, depending on where you are, pricing could be a con. And, you know, really the big question is, do you, should you, or, you know, do you need to upgrade? My opinion, if you're on the previous 3G, 3GS, or any of those, uh, you know, models below, I would say definitely upgrade. It is worth the money to shell out on the 4S, even if you don't need Siri, even if you don't need the A5 processor. You're just going to see, a you know, a speed increase and a much more difference in the way you utilize iOS 5 from, you know, compared to the 3GS. Also, the camera plays a huge factor in upgrading. I'm saying, you know, you know it's, it's good enough now to replace point, uh, basic point-and-shoot cameras with its 8 megapixel and its 1080p recording. It's Everything's built in. So you're, you're getting a, uh, you have to remember that you're getting an MP3 player, a camera, and a phone, and a web browsing device all built in. So that's what you're shelling out money for. Um, but I'm going to say, if you're on a 4, if you recently just got a 4 and you're fine with it, you, you know, you just had the contract, you just signed up, no need to upgrade unless you're an aficionado, you know, if you really want to be in the cutting edge. I need, I mean, my, I myself, I upgraded because my 4 is broken, but, you know, I would have upgraded anyway just because I need to, you know, have the latest tech and uh, I like to review products and stuff like that. But, you know, again, if you're just basic, you know, you just got on the 4, you don't need to upgrade unless, you know, you really want that, that camera features, which a lot of people, they either upgraded for the camera or for Siri. You know, if that's something you really find yourself going to be using a lot, then definitely, you know, and if you want to take advantage of that A5 to kind of future-proof yourself for, you know, new developers who will develop better games and stuff like that, the iPhone 4S may be worth it for you. 
Anyways guys, in my opinion, out of 10, I'm going to give the iPhone 4S a 7.5. It really is great in terms of speed. I find myself using Siri tons and tons, you know, more and more every day. Uh, you know, that may vary depending on what you do. I mean, I set a lot of reminders. I set a lot of appointments. I find myself using Siri a lot. Along with me being a vlogger, I find the camera usage great and all that. iOS 5 is awesome. Uh, really, the really reason you lose uh, loses any points on the scale is just because, uh, you know, battery life was kind of a little bit, you know, not as what I expected from the money I'm going to shell out for it. Um, you know, other than that, uh, no new design. I mean, really, it's just the same as a four. So you, nothing much, you know, different wise uh, in terms of distinguishing the both. But other than that, it really, really is a solid phone. I'm gonna say, if you're, you know, if you're a new customer, if you're on, you know, Sprint or, you know, anything like that, and you're looking for a new phone, I'm gonna recommend the 4S. If you're anything below a 3GS, I'm gonna recommend the 4S. And if you are on the iPhone 4, your contract may be running out. You don't know, you know, if you want another phone or anything like that. Or if you're, you know, you may want to upgrade, I'm going to say go ahead and make the upgrade. Other than that, you know, if you're on a 4 with a new contract or, you know, anything like that, your 4 is doing you fine, then really no need to upgrade unless you really need those key features that the 4S offers. Anyways, guys, Adrian here from the Digital Dojos. That is my final opinion. Don't forget to like the video, comment, love to hear your thoughts, video responses, all of that. Uh, you know, this took some time to edit, so please like the video, thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, and of course, check out our site for more information, more product reviews, news, etc. at digitaldojos.com. Till next time, guys, I'll catch you in the next video.